DNS is sort of like a phone book, mapping names to IP addresses. Without it, you'd have conversations like this. Hey, did you see that conversation on 69.121.178.80 about the new inflation numbers? Oh, I know right, man. I have to post that on 199.59.212.69 about how ridiculous it is. And everyone would have to break out the old magnifying glass and be like Sherlock Holmes, going around the world hunting and searching for clues. And given how hard it is for people to remember things like their phone numbers, I'm thankful we live in a world with DNS. But that doesn't mean that it's simple. So I'm gonna help you to sort all of this stuff out and tell you about the best DNS service you're probably not using yet. Now Azure has a default DNS service that uses the IP 168.63.129.16. And each of your virtual network's DNS servers are configured to use this Azure DNS by default so that they can do all of their lookups. This will also give your VMs a FQDN like vm-1.reddog.microsoft.com. But most of us aren't too happy with that because we want our own domain names like msazureacademy.com. So we would go and build our own DNS servers in the cloud and bypass this Azure DNS thing. And depending on what kind of solution you're trying to implement or what other cloud services you're trying to use, this might have a varying degree of success. So then along came Azure private DNS zones. You could leave your VNets configured with this default Azure DNS. Then you could link a private DNS zone to your virtual networks, which gave you a zero maintenance custom DNS solution without needing DNS servers. Sounds pretty good. But the downside has been that you can only resolve Azure private DNS zones from inside the VNet that you're linked to. So this would work just fine for your VMs that are in the cloud, but you couldn't resolve things back from on-prem. And if you wanted to use any of those platform services, you couldn't actually register them in your private zones, which made name resolution really hard. And you were kind of forced to use the internet endpoint of those things anyway. So to make scenarios like this work, Azure came up with the Azure Private Link service. And that creates a dedicated network card on your virtual network that represents the service that you're trying to use. And it also set up an Azure Private DNS zone to register that service and link that over to your VNet so that you can do local name resolution securely. But there is one big issue that all of these scenarios have in common, and that's resolving stuff from Azure to on-prem and on-prem to Azure. And the solution here is the new Azure DNS Private Resolver. To get started, you're gonna need an Azure Virtual Network with dedicated subnets for your endpoints. And those subnets need to be in the size of a slash 28, which is 16 IP addresses, all the way up to a slash 24, which is 256 IP addresses, depending on how much name resolution processing you need to do and the size of your environment and all that. To create a new private resolver, start by picking your subscription and resource group as usual, and we need a name for this resource, which I'll call Private DNS Resolve. And we're gonna deploy this in the East US region and scroll down. You need to select the virtual network in the same region where the resolver will live, and then click Next. Now we have the endpoints. Now there's two different kinds. You can create an inbound endpoint to resolve DNS queries from on-prem into the cloud, and you're gonna see a dedicated IP address on your VNet for this. And then we also have outbound endpoints. And this is the magic that'll give Azure DNS the ability to resolve to your custom DNS servers in Azure or all the way back on-prem, which up until now has basically been impossible because Azure DNS only lives in the cloud. It doesn't understand on-prem. And we're gonna create each one of these endpoints. I'll give this a name of private DNS resolve dash inbound and then select the existing subnet from the dropdown that you want to dedicate for this endpoint. And if you want more than one of each kind of endpoint, you can add that too, but each one will need their own subnets. When you've added all your inbounds, click next, and you add your outbound endpoints in the same way. Click add, give it a name, and then select the subnet. And notice that the inbound subnet is grayed out here because each one must be dedicated for its own endpoints and click next, and now we have the rule sets. Unlike the inbound endpoints, the outbound ones don't get IP addresses and NIC cards and all of that in the cloud. These are rules that'll tell the outbound endpoint which of your DNS servers should answer the queries on a specific DNS namespace. 
Now, the rule set itself is a separate Azure resource and therefore can be linked to multiple virtual networks. And since it's a separate resource, it needs its own name. Then select from the dropdown the outbound endpoint you want to use and scroll down. And here's where we add the rules. So I'll make one rule here for the Azure Academy. The domain name is msazureacademy.com dot. And you do need a dot at the end. That's something that tells DNS to stop right there. The rule state is going to be enabled. And for the destination, enter the private IP address of the authoritative DNS server for this domain which for me is 20.0.4.4. When you've added all your stuff, click add at the bottom and you can have multiple rules in a single set if you want to. When you're done adding all that stuff, click next and add your tags and then create. Now setting things up this way makes your virtual network your central focus. Your private zones are all linked to the VNet and so are the rule sets. So everything is connected here to Azure DNS which means all of your VNets in this region can now use the same private DNS resolver, even if those VNets aren't peered together. And that's because all of them are linked to Azure DNS. And Azure DNS is gonna go around and do all of the lookups that are necessary, even if it has to pass data back to a on-prem DNS server to provide you the answer to your query. So now that you have bi-directional DNS resolution finally set up for the cloud, maybe you should check out this other video on Azure Virtual Network Manager. That way you can centrally manage all of your networks from one place and get more benefit out of the cloud. Happy learning.